Hi, and welcome to the YouTube channel of Davy Community Worship Center. We are a community of believers committed to following Jesus Christ and spreading his love and message to those around us. On this channel, you'll find weekly sermons, Bible studies, and other resources to help you grow in your faith and connect with other believers. We hope you'll join us for one of our worship services, and we look forward to getting to know you. Thanks for stopping by, and hope the content blesses you on this channel. I'd like to bring your attention in hell to the scripture that was being read. And the scripture that is being read for the past for two, three weeks this week, make it three weeks, is the same scripture. And you wonder why are we doing that? Well, it is the Spirit of the Lord who bid us to do it. For the benefit of those of you who were not here, uh, who were not tuning in last week, it is Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. And the entire text was being read. I want to bring your attention, verse 10. My wife told me many years back, and she scarcely forgets anything, but I, maybe she forgets this, because of something I did, so she won't remind me now. So I said, this is the last time. And she said, you are just like the Apostle Paul. Every epistle he writes, he says, finally, my brethren. And he'll go back and write another one. <laughs> so um, the Apostle Paul said in verse 10 of Ephesians 6, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the wickedness of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Spiritual wickedness. Wherefore. Take unto you the whole armor of God. That you may be able to withstand it. In the evil day. And having done so. You may be able to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins tightly guarded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet protected with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, Taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench or to stop all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Don't forget that. Praying always with all prayer. And this is what bothers me. I, I, and I think it bothers all grammarians. Even though I am none. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. <laughs> Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And this verse, the last verse, the 19 that I'll be reading, make note of it. And pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. Let us say amen. 
I want to beg your righteous indulgence for the next couple of minutes. As I continue with what was started already. The Christian's armor for battle. I've come back hoping that I will conclude what was started a few weeks back. And that we will grasp the message that the Holy Spirit is giving unto us. I am not quite sure how many of us have seen the enemy's plan. But I believe that there are quite a few have. And saints of God, there has to be a very good reason for us to be so very often advised in the sacred pages to be strong in the Lord. It's got to be a reason. My late mother would have said, it's not so, so, so. And maybe some of you older ones here some of those whom I can welcome to my club, Senior Citizens Club, even though you're pretending that you are not eligible. You'll want to agree with me that the devil is at large. You could not disagree with me when a man is going to kill a woman and an eight-year-old baby and ten, what is it? Ten months. Infant, ten months. And burn the body. This cannot be ordinary time we are in. It's got to be deadly serious end time times. The devil He's at large. He's at large. And so there's a warning that is given out to us. That we are to be on our alert. And none of us is, is exempt from his onslaught. None of us is insulated from his attacks. None. We cease to do well when we cease to pray. Did you hear me? Saints of God, our most Christian duty is to pray. I cannot overemphasize this. Our most Christian duty is to pray. Always. And again, we must be determined to pray. And cease not to pray. Pray always, determine to pray, and cease not to pray. For our adversary, the devil, is like a hungry lion seeking whom he may devour in these last days. And my friends, such prayer that we are encouraged by the apostle to pray is based on one's relationship are his communion with God. Did you hear me? Yes. Praying with all prayer and supplication. Praying with all prayer and supplication. Praying in all season and out of season. Praying when it is prayer time and when it is not prayer time. Why? Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. I told you when I make the introduction to this message that our enemies are not in the church. Our enemies are spiritual enemies. And this denotes that the extent of the dimension of these invisible foes. Spiritual enemies. 
denotes that or spells out the extension or the, the extent of these invisible foes that we are fighting against every day. You can't see them. So you don't know where to drive the punch. If you could have seen, you'd have blood up his mouth. And knock out his teeth, but you can't see him. The only way you can see him, you must be in the spirit. Did you hear me? Because you are not fighting flesh and blood. How oh, did you hear me? I said this denotes the extent of the dimension of these invisible foes. That we are fighting against every day. Against the spiritual host of wickedness in high places. High places. This means either that these hosts of wickedness have their dwellings or habitation in high places. Are that these places where our conflicts are fought are in the atmospheric realm. Because you know that every prayer you pray got to pass through his domain before it reaches God. <laughs> Can you, have you thought about it? This is why we'll have to pray in the spirit. Do you understand? This means that the, the people of God, even in our most sublime service, we are still subject to the deadliest cunning attacks of the wickedness of these crafty spirits. That means even in church, they can accompany us to church. They can even reach here before us. They reach here before us and position themselves where they know the anointed servants of God will be. So that you won't be any obstruction to them. Oh yes, they come to church. You remember when Jesus walked among men, he met some of them in church. In, in, in church, one of them even chased uh, uh, Jesus to get out of the church. Because this is where he has been for a long time and nobody come to trouble him. So, you, you don't, don't disturb us, you see him, Jesus, we know you. How oh, you come to church? You're not a member here. We have been coming here a long time, we've never seen it. In fact, it is the first time Jesus had ever been to that church. And they began to chase him out. That he, they know you. Say, we know you. You are the son of the high almighty God. We know you. Satan comes to church. This means that the people of God, we are not safe anywhere from the attack of the wicked one. Look, verse 13, verse 13 of our text uh, bids us to take unto ourselves the entire armor of God so that we will be able to withstand. Look at it. Look at verse 13. And you may want to have it as your memory gem for the rest of the week. Take on the whole armor of God so that we'll be able to withstand in the evil days. And having done all to stand, 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 just stand. The command to be strong in the Lord is very fitly associated with our having done all to stand. Let us stand with the authority of the Holy Spirit. For we, for when God's strength comes to us, amen, it protects us and empower us and constrain us, amen, to stand. All we can do to stand, we are to stand. We are called upon to do all that we can do to stand. For Christ, amen, stand with him so that we may succeed in the battle of righteousness. Praying always. We are taught that 
even when all spiritual weapons are in place, we should still not cease to pray. <laughs> As prayer comes into the Christian warfare without any figure or any amount, for when it comes on to prayer, there's no limit and no time and no particular place. Do you hear me? We are taught to pray without stopping. For all is in vain without direct appeal to the almighty God. So pray always. Uh, Jacob had to wrestle with God uh, all night until daybreak. Did you hear me? Just to get a blessing from God. And when God the angel said, let me go, he said, so help me God I will not let you go you can kill me if you want and all when his hip was knocked out a joint and the angel was dragging him all about him he was dragging him and his hip was not he said I will not let you go until you bless me I will not let you go until you bless me Oh, people of God, you're not hearing me. Amen, you're not hearing me. Even so, in the Christian conflict, uh, when the lions are controlled by God's power and the breastplate of righteousness is on and the feet are protected with a shield, uh, amen, and the head crown is on uh, and you are fully armed with the shield of faith, uh, there is still another duty the word of God call upon us to perform. It is prayer. You have on your shield, you have on your breastplate, your, your head is covered, your feet are protected. Amen. Yet the Lord is saying, still pray. Praying always. Pray with all prayer. I don't understand him. I've been trying to understand it and there's no theologian could help me to understand what is meant by praying with all prayer. I want some more understanding. I want something more than what I thought about. So I've been delving in the mysteries of theological teaching. What praying with all prayer mean? And the only answer I get is to keep on praying. Praying with all prayer. Oh yes, uh, uh, this comes with the, the, the whole tenor, the whole tenor of the Christian warfare. Such is in accordance with the old language of the Bible. Amen. Did you hear me? Queen Esther had to pray and she called a fasting. Not only pray, but Queen Esther had to call a fasting for trouble light. Amen. At the door of her people. May I say trouble lies at our door. Did you hear me? Enoch walking with God. Hot amen. Abraham interceding with God. You hear what I said? Esther called fasting and prayer. Enoch walking with God. Abraham interceded with God. For Sodom, amen. The saints prayed for Peter while he was in prison. Are you hearing me? Moses interceding with God and the mount, amen, for Israel. Elijah praying to God. God for rain when there was no rain. David, Ezekiah, Daniel, amen. Simeon, Anna, Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord himself, prayed all night in the garden. Oh, until his sweat became like drops of blood, thick blood farming, falling from his veins. And the Lord God had to pray. Why is it you and I are not praying? When last have you dropped asleep on your knees? Remember there was a time gone when you knelt down to pray and you wake up the next morning you were still on your knees. Yes, sir. When last it happened to you? When last have we fell asleep on our knees? Think about it. I told you about it. These people who prayed, prayed. Look at them. Queen Esther, Enoch, Abraham, yeah, Anna, Moses, Elijah, David, name it, name them. All of these prayer warriors uh, have taught us, uh, amen, that the Christians warrior ought always to begin and end with prayer. Yes, uh, I am a warrior you have always sung. A Christian warrior 
with your weapon in your right hand. Oh, who wait upon the Lord, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Mount up with wings, it is said, when the eagle's feathers get old and dirty. But you know that the eagles, most, their meal come from um, dead animals. That's, that's their main meal, eagles, dead flesh, as it were. And so many times by delving into their meal, they get their, their feathers all messed up and dirty up until begin to smell it. And uh, oh, the specialist told us when the eagle finds herself or himself like that, he would fly up into them, up into the heavens, high, high, high up into the heavens where nobody can see her or see him. And then she or she takes a deep dive into the depth of the ocean. Down, down, down. And by the time it comes up, all the feathers are clean and new again. So this is how sometimes when the toils of life messed up our feathers, we need to mount up with wings like eagles. Those who honor me set God, he will honor us back whenever it comes uh, unto prayer. Amen. There are certain clearly defined areas where we are teaching and prayer is set forth. But the, amen, the, the fountain head of prayer all comes from the almighty God himself. It doesn't matter who writes about prayer and what they have written. The substance and the synergy of prayer comes from Jesus Christ himself who is the main prayer warrior. In, in St. Luke chapter 11, where our Lord lectured on the importance of prayer. St. Luke chapter 11, you don't have to go there now. Some other time, our Lord gave a lecture on the importance of prayer. In the parable of the friend who was borrowing three loaves of bread from his friend. You remember that? Amen. The friend uh, who was borrowing three loaves of bread from his friend who visited with him in the mid of the night. Our Lord very sternly inculcated that consistency was the ground on which the confidence of the borrower was found. He was consistent in his asking even when he was insulted and was told that his friend is gone to his bed and he cannot wake up and disturb his family to give him any bread. But what that friend did not know. He did not tell the inquirer that he didn't have any bread. From the moment he said, I cannot disturb my family to give you bread. He's telling the inquirer that bread is there. And that gives him to pray some more. From the moment God tells you to pray, tell you that he will answer your prayer. Bread is there. Uh, bread. Bread is there. God has bread. Hallelujah. God, he go. Although he don't pay you no mind, go back and ask again. The Lord said it is consistency. Amen. Such as the parable of the unjust judge. It was consistency that caused the woman. She has a problem every day, but she don't have any money to employ any lawyer. She couldn't get any, any barrister, Jesus said. But she has a case in court. She wasn't treated properly. And uh, therefore the clerk at the court uh, or the prosecutor did not list her problem. Because it was not uh, documented. She wanted to approach the judge herself and under the law. It is not allowed. You are not allowed to approach the judge. Come on. Have some decency about yourself. There's a clerk of the court. You must present your case to the clerk. And let the clerk present your case. But she have to have money to present that and she didn't have any money every day jesus said she went to court and i said your honor has the the bailiff said order oh yeah oh yeah this court is in order order in the house and she and the moment uh, the bailiff said that jesus said the lady got up and said your honor and the bailiff grabbed her and pushed her outside say you're under arrest you don't have any case here. And she went home crying. And Jesus said she kept on going to court every day here. Until this day when she went, uh, amen, and the court was open. She, Your Honor, please. And the clerk of court ran out. Jesus said, bring her to me. 
Jesus said, bring her to me. What is your problem? Every day you come disturbing me. Said, and then she put her case to Jesus. And the Bible said, Jesus addressed her case. You have a case in court, please. Why? Hey, why do you come to church? This is your court. You have a case. That's why you come to church. You have a case in court. And the Holy Spirit is the clerk of the court. Why don't you present your case to the master? Yeah, that's why you come to church. If all oh, men, if you didn't have any case, you wouldn't come here. It's a case you have while you come to church. And the Holy Spirit, amen, is giving you a chance to declare. Declare your case to God. Declare it. What our Lord did. Look at it. Consistency and continuity. Our Lord, he's delaying to the answer to your prayer. Are not any indifferences, but simple. When he doesn't answer your prayer, he's allowing your faith to grow. He wanted to develop more faith in him. That's why your prayer is not answered yet. Don't give up. When I, oh, please stand. It's a, it's a profound word. When I was in the A class, you know, that's a way. But none of you here know when I was in A class. Way back there, a dog of my age don't have a tooth in his mouth. I was in the A class and Miss Walker was my teacher. And she taught us this gem. Never give up. Never give up if adversity presses. Providence while you have the cup. The best wishes in all your distresses is a stout watch word of never give up. If a knot is in a string, patience will untie it. Patience can do many things. Did you ever try it? If it were sold at any shop, I would like to buy it. But you and I must have our own. No other can supply patience. You've got to build your own. You might, and Jesus, when he does answer your prayer, he's teaching you to build your own patience. Oh, my God. It's like I'm hearing, it's like I'm hearing him. I'm hearing them sing, oh, I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails. Like I'm just hearing them keep on provoking me. I, I love you, Lord. In the, you see, in the temptation of our Lord, people, in the temptation of our Lord, when Satan was fiercely trying to incarnate the Savior. Did you hear me? I said, in the temptation of our Lord Jesus Christ, when Satan was fiercely trying to incarnate the Savior and to misrepresent the character of the Almighty God, his Father. Uh, amen. And to put a cloud over the scriptures. Uh, and uh, amen. What our Lord did, uh, amen, in facing that temptation was to confront Satan with the powerful word of God. Uh, amen. And the word of God blast, uh, amen, is deception like a thunderbolt. Jesus said, Satan, it is written. Because Satan went to him and said, you can fall off, but it is written that he will, God will give you angel. What a fierce boy. In scripture, in Psalm 91, Satan was quoting to Jesus, you know, you don't know that it is written in Psalm 91, Jesus, that uh, you can throw yourself down. He will give his angel charge over you and they will bear you up in their hands lest you should fall and dash your foot against stone. So jump off. <laughs> Hallelujah, jump off because you are God. Since you are the son of God, jump off. And nothing will happen to you. Psalm 91. That is what Satan quoting to Jesus. Ah, well, Jesus Christ, no more than that. And Jesus said, it is written also, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. But before Jesus said that, it is Satan, get behind me. You son of a gun. You know, you know, you know, like I know, sir. The only thing you tell to walk off is dog. Move. Go ahead, dog. Get behind me. And that is what said. That's what Jesus had called him, your dog. Get behind me. It is written, Amen. You should not tempt the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Ah, please, brothers and sisters. Jesus answered and said, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, it is documented. 
you, I know, you know where Jesus quoted from? He quoted from Satan, quoted from, from Psalm 91. Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy 10 and verse 20. Uh, way back now on the earth, it was written, it is written, don't tempt the Lord your God. Amen. You must know the scripture for yourself. That when Satan comes to you and quoting scripture to you, you can answer him back with scripture. Because only scripture can deal with scripture. Uh, oh my, this is found in Deuteronomy 10, 20. Our Lord confronted Satan with the powerful truth of God's word, which is opposed to his deception. And so the Christian combat at all time, we must be able to, amen, to answer the devil with the word of God. Christians combatant also must not only know God, but we must know God's word that when the devil confront us, we can deal with him. Saints of God, no one for that matter. Hear me good. No one for that matter is worthy of being a soldier unless you are carrying a weapon. What are you doing where are you going with your two empty hand? You are going to battle to do what saints have. No one for that matter is worthy of combatant as soldier. You have some old soldier here who carry no responsibility. You don't you talk about nobody is supposed to be in the church who don't have any responsibility. You know. You know, when the, when the choir is singing and I sit there, you know, I'm, I look in every one of them face to see if they're enjoying what I'm doing. It doesn't make sense. If you cooking, cook the food and you don't, you know, if it tastes something. I look, I, as the choir begin, I look, I check up then. If I see a seat empty, ask her. I'm going to ask uh, Jean. I said, there are a couple of seats empty on the choir. Where are they? I want to know if you're dead. Because you should be in the, on the choir. You're not there. Are they sick? Where are they? I, I am going to, you don't know I do that. Yes, I check. There are a couple of seats empty. Where were those people? Are they were dead? Are they gone to Jamaica? Are they gone? Look for them, auntie. Are something happened there in the hospital? I have to have a report because I am going to report to God. About you. It is my responsibility. To I said there are a couple of seats empty. What happened to those people? Where were they? And then I watch you when you're singing. And if they're not enjoying the singing, I can't enjoy it either. You got I watch some of them smile as they sing, you know. Before the day is and if they, if, if they say before the days of the hand on their face like they grew it with donkey, and then I realize I'm not enjoying the thing. But before the days, oh, <laughs> hallelujah, you realize they're enjoying what they are doing. I'm, and me begin to enjoy too because them shaking themselves. And so them set me a shaking also before the days. Oh, hallelujah, oh, before the night comes on. Hallelujah! He will come through for me. They are enjoying it. I am going to enjoy it. And the whole church is going to enjoy it. He will come. He will come through. Oh, say it. Oh, Lord, if anyone will hear me. Oh, Jesus said it. If anyone will come after me, Jesus said, let him deny himself first. Then take up his armor. And come, come with me. Deny yourself first. And then take up your armor. Saints of God. Amen. To be advancing in the, in the warfare against these evil foes. Who are trying to defeat us. This is indeed no easy task. Such is not a, a very. It, it's, a, it's a powerful battle. To be fighting it's a powerful battle we must we must fight like is the last let me tell you something have you ever seen seen two dogs fighting they fight like it's their last fight and if you're not listening here the word of god tells us in in the book of second corinthians chapter 11. oh well my 
my God. The word of God tells us in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 14 and 15. That we should not be careless in our watchfulness. For Satan has power and will to transform himself into an angel of light. You ever hear this from your band? You know, don't fool yourself and believe. You know, my, my late mother would have said, don't skylark. Most of you don't even know that word. It's first you hear it. <laughs> don't skylark with me. Because I'm not playing. The word of God tells it. Second Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. That we should not be careless in our watchfulness. For Satan, Satan has power. And will to transform himself into an angel of light. My God, an angel of light is God's angel, you know, sir. How could Satan have power to transform himself, my brother, into God's angel? Have you ever thought about it? Look at it. According to verse 15, therefore, then, if he said in verse 14, he can do that. Then according to verse 15, therefore, it is not a great thing for him to incarnate himself into careless living church members and transform himself as messengers of God when he's a messenger of the devil. If he can transform himself as an angel of God, why cannot he do to you? Satan has a way of disguising himself as an angel of God. His, his has been, his, this has been his way upon the operation of careless living people down through the ages. Do you hear what I say? This spiritual warfare with the powers of darkness is no hanky-panky or underhanded activity. He's not a Nancy story, a little, little Jack and Deville. Did you hear me? This, this, this battle with Satan is not up, Scott, jump in and jump out and pick your partner. It's time you understand that is real warfare. Oh, so my God Almighty. Yeah. I tell you, real warfare will mash you up. It will mash you down to nothing. It will take with your husband and take with your wife and take with your children and turn them mad. Satan will mash you up. Amen. Our foes are relentless. In his effort to defeat God's people. Spiritual warfare with the power of darkness. is no anky panky or underhanded activity. For our foes are relentless in his efforts to defeat God's people. I'm going to tell you something before you go. You're going to holler. May I tell you. No, no undermine you. Satan can undermine any one of us. Start from the pulpit here. Yeah, undermine and overthrow. He can overthrow this preacher anytime if he don't stand on his watch. Amen. And if you fasting and prayer, people don't fasting and prayer for this preacher before you know it, I'm done on my face. Yeah. Who am I? I don't have any power to stand against Satan. If I'm going to stand against him, I need the powers of Almighty God. Uh. And the devil is very skillful, you know. You're messing around with him. Satan is a skillful fella. He's skillful, amen, in even disguising himself so as to remain undetected in his sinister plans to defeat God's purpose. But now is the time when God the Holy Spirit has awakened the believer to rise up and assume your rightful position as a servant of God and soldiers of God and march in God's name and take position. Amen. Take position. Satan will incarnate you and allow you to believe that you are doing God's will. When he'll die, this is what, listen, hear what he said to Jesus. He said, you are the son of God. So since you are the son of God, why not you just command these stone to turn into bread? 
you don't see thousands of people come to you and them hungry. Uh, and, and, uh, and all shop closed now and the people them hungry. Uh, uh, Satan said, uh, let the stone turn bread for you are the son of God. And Jesus could have done it, as I told you before. And everybody could have eaten bread, 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 bread. Amen. But the end result was that Jesus obeyed Satan. And that was it. Satan can incarnate you and allow you to do something good. Yeah. Because he is very powerful in his counterfeit grace. Amen. I was going to ask somebody if you have a hundred dollar bill to hold it up but you don't want to but you know you have so much in your pocket sir. let it stay because me not going to be standing around the pulp and ask for nothing less than a hundred dollar bill hallelujah but, but when if I, I would have to have a counterfeit one here you hold up the right one and me hold up the counterfeit and you can't tell us which one you have to have a special instrument a special light uh, to hold it up you can know if this is counterfeit or not that special light that you need to have is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, somebody pray for me. Is the Holy Spirit. You will, he will use counterfeit and you and mash you down and you think it's real money you have. The police will lock you up. He's very good on his counterfeit grace. Him. Counterfeit grace, you know that he in, instill in careless living people and allow you to believe that you are righteous and, and you are doing good and you have God's grace. He, the devil, can operate under a grand instance of the mask of light and disguise himself. He can disguise himself as an angel of God while he's a devil and the deceiver. The Bible said, the word of God said, Satan has power to disguise himself as an angel of God. Him, an angel of God, while he's a devil and a deceiver and Satan himself, he can impose himself upon the human family and let you see, he can let you as a man see another man and believe he's a woman. You know, you know see, I told you I'm going to preach my God word. See, a Satan, you believe a God do it. Satan will allow you as a man to see another man and fall in love with the man and believe as a woman and marry to the man and you're a man and only to find out that two men cannot have children. But the wedding gone bad already. You're married already. Hey! As you believe is God doing. I Satan allow you as a man to say another man and believe is a woman. And a God do it. I Satan do it. I Satan, Satan, Satan. Yes, I Satan do it. He, the devil, can operate under a grand instance of mask of light. And this guy, he can disguise himself, amen, as an angel of God. While he's a devil, he can impose himself upon the human family and let you see, amen, another person and believe he's a person of the opposite sex while he's the same sex. Amen. Satan can even allow you to believe that you're in a dog or companion. Only, if, only to find out later on that you both cannot have children because you are the same sex. Uh, what do you believe Satan is after? Satan is after the human race. Uh, the human race is more kill out because when you as a man married to a man and it told you can't have children, uh, soon and very soon the human race is going to die out. Amen. He said, and don't play this trick with the animal. Him don't do it with dog. Him don't do it with donkey. Now, nah, what make is you and I am dealing with it? He's our race him after and the church he want to mash up a God plan him after nobody not helping me preach you know a master God plan him after and the human race him after 
Amen. Why well, don't do it with dog and cow and donkey? What well, makes you and I deal with? Amen. Because we are God's children. Hey, and I is a church him after. Soon and very soon, nobody won't live in the church. You can't find nobody be married because bang around going on out there. And no bad, no baby not burning again because two men can have baby and two women can't have baby. So no bang around going on in the church now. You can't find nobody to marry. The human race mash up. Satan mash up the human race. You're not following me. The human race. The human race him after. Because the human race is God's plan. Hallelujah. God's plan for the church. The human population will die out. And the church of our Lord Jesus Christ will grow empty. For there is no, there's nobody of the opposite sex to marry, to be married where you can have children. So baby, stop born. Oh, nobody not, nobody not hearing me this morning. Uh, Jesus Christ, uh, it is a plan of, he, he transformed himself. That wicked wretch transformed himself into an angel of light uh, and confused the human race. You don't hear what I'm telling you as a word of God from the almighty God to give to the human race. Oh yes. oh yes. The devil. The devil's great end is to destroy the human family. Not the donkey family. Or the dog family. It's a human family I'm after. You don't understand what I'm talking about, preacher. It's a human family. You're going to mash me down. The devil's his greatest end, his greatest end is to destroy the human family. And so he, he disguises himself as an angel of light. And lead the careless living people in, in a downward trend to their doom. Such was his plan from the very beginning. Have you not heard of the most recent human slaughter? Amen. That is taking place among humanity. How can a man in his right mind, amen, kill a woman, kill the few months old baby, and bird? You don't hear what's going on out in the world here. You don't hear what going on down at the country where you come from. Amen. Yes. Insane human. Amen. Being slaughtered. Both mother and eight months old baby. Her ten months old baby. Amen. And burn the body. And so the human race is dying out for he's against, Satan is against God's plan for the human race from the very beginning. For two of the same gender cannot populate the human race. So I'm turn your fool and your head part. That's where I'm start from. Because when two persons of the same gender married, you can't produce. And that is a plan that Satan has. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. What is going to happen to the human race a few years from now, sir? If this thing continue, amen, and human being don't come to your senses and find somebody of the opposite sex where they tell you can have children, what is going to happen to the human race? I want some of your geniuses out there who agree with this bang around to tell me what is going to happen to the human race in a few years from now. Lord God Almighty, no baby not being born. What is going to happen to the human race? Satan has a plan to damage God's plan. If he can transform himself into the angel of God, then how for sure he can transform a woman 
and allow her to resemble her man. And, and, and vice versa. He can, he can allow you to fall in love with a person of the same sex. And you can go ahead and marry. No problem. The law permits you. So I'm not troubling you on, you on the law. I'm just telling you that the both of you can't have any children. So listen to me. You know one of the great... <laughs> One of the greatest bang around. You don't understand what I'm trying to tell you. Everybody would like to know that there's somebody around to carry on your name when you're gone. Yes. We're in a sad state of being. Very sad indeed. Your guess is just as good as mine. What is going to happen to the human race? In a few years from now. Think about it. Just, just what is the main purpose? What is the main purpose of marriage? If it's not to produce and have children. What is the main purpose? Tell me. You guys are smart. You got a lot of smart. You got a lot of you medical persons that reach my voice. After church. Why don't you sit me down and tell me. What are the purpose does it make for you to marry if you don't have intention of populating the race? You will soon and very soon be dead and gone in eternal oblivion. And your name dead with you. Who will keep your name alive, thou fool? Who will populate the human race and keep your name alive, thou fool? Indeed, Satan was once an angel of God. Ah, good place to pull the curtains in. Satan was once an angel of light, you know. You forget that. Ah, but he transgressed against God and was cast out of the presence of the Almighty. He transgressed against God and became an angel of darkness. He lost his light. Became an angel of dark. Saints of God. The angel of God are represented. Take this before you go please. The angels of God are represented in the scriptures as heavenly beings. People of God, hear what I'm telling you now. Amen. Oh, one of these days, one of these Sundays, I will stand here and say, Thus said the Lord. And it's the last time you're going to hear me say it. Oh, Katari Honda, I'll be gone. He that art hears to hear, hear. Saints of God. Angels of God are represented in the scriptures as heavenly beings who are sent by God, the Almighty, as heavenly messengers to minister to humans. Amen. As God's agent, angels of God are God's agents. And in the scripture, angels are personally identified with God himself. And they speak not merely for God. Yeah, well, uh, for God but they speak as God many times angels in the Bible not merely speak for God speak as God in the first person they spoke as God in the first person sometimes as he did to Agar and uh, Sarah's maiden Ishmael mother when she put down the baby and gone once and gone cry God came down in the form of an angel and talked to her and said, God, take up the baby for Ishmael has a purpose in this world and go feed the baby. God himself will come down and talk to you sometimes. Hallelujah! It's not all the while him sending angels, sometimes he come himself. Hallelujah! Oh, glory! Oh. As he did to Abraham. He did to Abraham. Oh yes. In Genesis chapter 16. Spoke with, with, um, with, the, with the baby's mother. Or as he did to Abraham. Genesis 17. When Abraham was 90 years of age. 90. 
90, God came down and appeared to him and talked to him and told him what to do. Or as he spoke to Jacob uh, in Genesis 31, when Jacob uh, got in trouble, amen, uh, amen, and went to sleep and didn't have any pillow because he tricked his brother and didn't know that night will catch him. I want to tell you the trickster at the reach of my voice that while he's a day, go on tricking, but night is going to catch up on you. Can trick any, anybody you want to trick during the day. But when night come, his mother, amen, Jacob's mother taught him how to do trickery. And she said, I taught him to trick his brother and send him away to pay the near. And, but his mother didn't tell him that night will catch him. Maybe your mama is doing the same thing. Night will catch everybody. Night is going to catch us. And when night comes, you must sleep. And if you don't have any pillar, you grab one stone. Amen. And rest your head on it. That was what Jacob did. Uh, God appeared unto him and talked to him. Amen. And he, he made a pledge to God. He said, God, if you bless me and keep me safe, amen, and carry me back, I'll give you one tenth of all that you give me. Anybody at the reach of my voice that made that promise to God, if you bless me and take me out of trouble, and heal me, I'll pay my tides. Sometimes, uh, sometimes these, these angels, they are angels of light. I, I never seen any. Sometimes these angels are angels of light. Amen. Uh, offering guidance and instruction to God's children. Uh, coming on home. Amen. As we travel along, every now and then an angel might meet us. Uh, saints of God. How on earth? How on earth for heaven's sake? Uh, amen. Can Satan turn himself into a angel of God? Sometimes these angels are messengers of God to the church. As the seven stars of Patmos. And in the practice of our worship, sometimes, do, we do, do you not see it here? In the practice of our worship, sometimes we visualize angels, amen, as amounting to real personification of God, the Holy Spirit, visiting the church sometime. And all of us get in a poker. For some heavenly being is among us. Uh, oh, then no one hurt can sit and with himself, form himself as an angel of God. How can Satan, the devil, do that? Form himself into an angel of God. Tell me, people. Oh, anybody tell me now. Nah? How can Satan transform himself into a messenger of God? God, an angel of light, so has to incarnate the children of God and confuse them as if he is a messenger of God. Uh, saints of God, let us be on our guard against these transformed fallen angels who are posing themselves as angels of light and messengers of God and turn you into a fool. Be careful, said the apostle to the church. Not, not all voices here is God's voice. Uh, oh, people of God, uh, saints of God, did you hear me? Did you hear me? Satan's habit uh, from of old is always to masquerade himself as a shining angel of light uh, and a messenger of God, disguising himself, uh, amen, in carrying out his sinister, amen, new furious wickedness, uh, amen. How very crafty can the devil uh, metamorphosize himself very crafty he can metamorphosize himself into an angel of light uh, like a dead corpse uh, lying in a casket and they decorate with it flowers but when you hope there's a rotten person in the casket ah oh, man that's what satan does was not the same old trick he the devil Played on our first mother. Uh, our first mother Eve. Way back there in the garden of paradise. Uh, hear what she said. You going to he said, eat it. I'm, see, I'm eating it. You know? It's nice. Mm. Lovely fruit. Mm. You shall not surely die. See I'm eating it here. Me eat it. and You see me dead? 
that you metamorphosize himself as an angel of light. You don't understand me. You don't understand. When, when, listen to me, when, when he, the devil, invited the Savior up to the pinnacle of the temple, he was trying to fool. But he can't fool God. Ah, no. He cannot fool God. Saints of God, you must know the word of God to use it. We need to slap him with the word of God. And he must get out of our face. Get him out. Get Satan out of your face. You know, see it coming up in your face. Get Satan out of your face. And the word of God, this it is written, will compel and transform the devil to return to where he comes from. Saints of God, uh, don't be surprised if the devil, Satan, will not approach you as an angel of light. Be on your guard and be on your lookout. Listen to me, children of God. I may not be AI savvy. You know the term, eh? I may not be AI savvy. I may not be I tech savvy. I may not be able to compete with my grandchildren who just born yesterday. Get on the computer and depict them no more than me. I and let me listen, many of my companion. For what is a bafflement to me is nothing to me. I, I may not be AI savvy. I may not be uh, I tech savvy. I may not be able to compete with my grandchildren. Eh? Amen. I may not be doing that. But hear me, people. I am not a punk. I'm not AI savvy, but I'm not a punk. I know when Satan coming up near me. I smell him and I see him and I feel him. Oh, Lord God, I'm coming home now. Anytime a, a evil spirit come near you, you know. You know, something happened to your body. A ch oh, Lord God, man, come on. Help. A chill, come on, you look around. Something not right around here. You must know, know when the devil is, you must, you're not a punk. And I tell you something, since our last members meeting, since our, that, that was last Sunday, you can, okay, you can close the Bible. Listen to me. You know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you two things that happened to me. Then I'm going to pray for you. Since our last members meeting, last Sunday, two angels of the Lord appeared unto me. Listen good. Since our last members meeting, I've had two visitations from God in the form of is angelic messengers. The first angelic messenger said, she saw me ministering around the podium in her vision, the same podium, listen to me. And over my head was a swarm of gingy flies. She was sitting in the audience. And she said when she looked and saw the swarm of kingy fly, immediately a lightning flash, the power of God, and a gust of wind came and blew them away. That was the first visitation. An angel of the Lord came and visited with me. The second angelic messenger came in the form of a member of this church. She said to me that I heard your voice in the members meeting. And the angel said, and you were under pressure. And I have come to minister to you to take your burdens. And these two angels came in the form of members of this church. God Almighty knows when you're in trouble.
but before the day is over. He watch. Listen, me get yourselves ready before I want before the day is over. Even if Clover not there, one of you sing it. Before the day is over. All the problems and the frustration that the devil thinks by transforming himself into angel of light and bring disgrace and destruction upon you. And you think, you really think that God is going to sit by and allow the devil. Huh? You think so? He's not going to allow it to happen. The first messenger said, a gust of li a light came and a gust of wind and blow the gingy flies away. And the other angel said, I heard your speech in the members meeting and you're under pressure and I have come to minister to you. And the angel continued, because it is God who has sent you to Davy, and his work has not yet accomplished. So Satan is not going to win. I want you to stand with me before the day is over. Thank you for watching our church service today on YouTube. We hope you took something away from the message and it will stay with you throughout the week. If you are not a member of our church, we would love to have you join us in person for one of our upcoming services. Please visit our website for more information on service times and locations. We also encourage you to connect with us on social media and sign up for our mailing list to stay updated on all the latest happenings at our church. Remember, you're always welcome here. May God bless you and keep you in his love. Have a great week.